in you guys and welcome back to my channel Poetry of Nice. If you're new here this is a channel all about reselling online and making a profit selling thrifted items from yard sales and garage sales and thrift stores and all kinds of other places on platforms like eBay, Poshmark, Macari and Etsy. Since it's a brand new year I figured I would do a different kind of video today and I'm going to share with you my top 10 best-selling brands on the Poshmark app in 2020. Basically what I've done with the magic of Excel and formulas is I've been able to look at all of the different brands that sold for me across the year 2020 on Poshmark and I'm going to share them with you and of course I will share with you on my computer as well some examples of exactly what sold by those brands so you can see what kinds of things were scooped up by buyers on Poshmark within the last year. Don't forget to let me know down below in the comments as well what your best-selling brands were or brands that you always pick up when you are out thrifting. All right, without further ado, let's check it out. All right, you guys. So as promised, here comes the top 10 items. I'm going to start at 10 and I'm going to work my way back down to the elusive number one best-selling brand um, on Poshmark for me in 2020. And um, I'm just going to give you a quick overview of some items by these brands that have sold recently. Um, and I'm going to let you know what I look for in these brands and what I tend to avoid as well. I'll make it fairly succinct, but I'm going to try and give you some of that information so that hopefully that can help people who are looking to branch out into other brands that maybe they haven't tried yet. Um, and I like to keep the sales fairly recent when I show these videos, even though it's not a perfect time capsule. You know, this is for 2020 at the end of the day. Um, at least it shows people who are watching this video now exactly what is selling for me in the marketplace. Sometimes people can find that helpful. So first one is, as you can see, number 10, Banana Republic. So let me tell you what I look for here. Banana Republic for me is all about the fabrics. I know that sounds silly, um, but I don't find that much else seems to move for me. This is 100% Merino Italian wool sweater um that is why i picked this up purely because of the fabric content i only paid a dollar for this item so selling it for 16 is absolutely fine by me um i'm going to show you some shoes as well again i'm really hit on miss with the shoes again we're looking at that uh, that cost of goods price point of a dollar um so these ones sold for 18 and both of these items sold fairly quickly after listing i feel like they're very classic like i said they have those fantastic fabric contents and of course i'm really focusing on keeping that cost of goods goods low by going to things like yard sales and stuff and the last item is a men's item so banana republic men's does sell for me on poshmark as well but again we have that merino wool blend fabric content that is so important for me when i'm buying for this brand okay next is number nine and this is a two-way tie between american eagle and lane bryant so let me show you just a couple from either one so when we get to american eagle denim is a lot of what i'm focused on there and i do not pick it all up by any means in fact, moving forward, I'm really limiting to it to a high-rise pair of jeans, either jegging or a skinny cut, and preferably heavily distressed. Those are the things that seem to sell for me. Now, if I can get those in a larger size, like say 10 and up, that is ideal. I'm still not spending more than just a couple of dollars on these items, but in denim-wise, that really is what is moving for me right now. I am not moving like boot-cut jeans and things anywhere like I used to. So I'm very, very specific with my denim when it comes to American Eagle um, and then when it comes to tops again very specific it has to be something that kind of stands out that is it has a lot of keywords attached to it and I think will appeal to a wide a range of people really and um, so for instance this top here it's soft and sexy which is a line under American Eagle I really like that line it does sell well for me but not all the pieces sell I have to say but obviously we have a novelty graphic print here it's very celestial astrological whatever you want to call it but we have some keywords to play with so that is why i picked up this particular tank top as well again just keeping that cost of goods to a dollar or two and the last one is another soft and sexy example a graphic t-shirt so again i'm showing you that there are things here that have some keywords and some standout features it's not just a plain black t-shirt i don't think i would bother picking that up it really has to have something that makes that piece slightly more unique okay and when it comes to lane bryan i like their active wear quite well um again keeping that dollar or two none of these brands that have sold frequently for 
me are things that I would pay up for. They're very much what I would call bread and butter, but I refer to them as bread and butter because they sell frequently. As you can see from this list, these are my top 10 best selling brands and they sell quickly for the most part. So uh, full disclosure there. So uh, we have Livy by Lane Bryant. That is their like active wear line, if you like. Um, I like to keep my Lane Bryant pieces very much towards the plus size side of things. So I don't pick up Lane Bryant usually if it's like a 14, 16, or even sometimes a 16, 18. I like to try and keep it 18 and up um, just because I find that those sizes move faster for me and that there is more demand for them. And then another example of a Lane Bryant piece that I picked up and would pick up again is a pair of tropical floral print pants and the reason I picked these up is because again there's novelty here there's something here that stands out they're not just a plain pair of like black work pants even if they're line brian even if they're plus size there is something else to them that would attract a buyer again I'm starting to get really really specific here with the clothing that I'm picking up it has to be a little bit special for me to sort of take the time to deal with it at this point. Okay, number eight, we have another tie between two brands, the first of which is Bowden. So Bowden used to do very, very well for me, and it takes a little bit longer now, as far as I can tell. However, I will still pick it up, um, just depending on the piece, basically. So I have a dress to show you here. I do like the Bowden dresses. I find that they do a little bit better than, say, like just the, the blouses or the top. So I tend to lean towards those when I can find them. However, this piece is a little more plain. I would have liked a brighter, bolder floral style print to it. And um, this is an example of a top I would pick up. Again, that sort of like bolder print to it. And it also has the faux wrap um, styling to it with that ruching. So it's very, very flattering. And again, there's some great keywords there in terms of like style and cut. The second half of number eight is J. Crew, not Factory. <laughs> uh, J. Crew Factory doesn't do fantastic for me anymore. Um, I'm very, very selective. It has to be a very, very interesting piece for me to pick that up now. Um, but I did want to show you this J. Crew collection. So let me go ahead and show you this tag as well. This is like the sort of higher end version of J. Crew, if you like. Um, and this can do quite well, not as well as it used to. Again, I find the marketplace is forever shifting. So not everything will sell like it always did. That's just natural. But I I do still pick this up when it's in good condition and it is cheap enough. So J. Crew Collection, um, I like to pick up their career wear and things like that. Again, if the price is right. And then just in terms of regular J. Crew, I will pick it up if it is a modern style or a modern cut. And also I'm careful with my labels. I don't really pick up the older labels anymore. Um, I tend to go for this label right here and up. Um, so I'm pretty sure they have a newer label than this at this point. But if I see the black label and I see that it is a modern contemporary cut and it's something that's quite marketable, um, then I will most likely still pick that up again if that price is right. All right. Number seven is a four way tie because it just is. That's the facts. When, when I did all my formulas, that is what it came out of. So I'm just going to tell you all four for the sake of being um, transparent. So we have Ann Taylor. First of all, I'm going to tell you when it comes to Ann Taylor, I pick very specific career pieces. I pick this dress, for example, because it has the faux wrap element to it. And that is um, fairly popular at this point in time. Obviously, that can shift. Next brand tied at number seven is Chico's. Again, a brand that I am mostly moving away from at this point. But there are certain pieces that I just cannot resist. I really like this black and gray wool blend coat and um, with the oversized collar. I just thought it was really nice. It was so nicely made and it sold within a week for 25. So I'm glad that I did pick it up, but again, would not pay more than a few dollars for that. Okay. Still at number seven, the next brand is Clark's. I am also getting very picky with Clark's. I used to swear by it as a brand. Now I stick mostly to the heels and the boots, if I'm honest. So I grabbed these for a dollar. They were brand new stickers still inside. Um, and they saw for 35 as you can see and then I have an example here of a very classic sort of like tweed Mary Jane style pair of Clark's heels sold for 30. I'm starting to really move away from the Clark's sandals and the ballet flats again unless there is something very special about them simply because they feel oversaturated to me in the market and they're not selling the way that they used to. Okay next uh, so still on number seven but the final brand that's represented here is Victoria's Secret not, not pink Victoria's Secret just Victoria's Secret like 
standard. Um, so I will pick up the occasional like bathing suit by them and the occasional bra, um, but sparingly again. Uh, the push-up bras I will pick up if they're a dollar or two. The front fastening bras I will if they have a very bold print or some kind of detail. I've had them before with like chain and things like that on them. I will pick those up as well, but just the standard bras I usually stay away from at this point unless I can buy like a bunch in the same size at the same time that I can bundle. Um, but what I will pick up is the Victoria's Secret pajama sets. Um, they seem to do well for me. So this one here had a little, um, the monogram and it had a little reindeer all over it. And then this one here had little kind of like snowflakes or flowers all over it. Um, again, as long as the price is right, like $5 and below, I will almost always pick up the Victoria's Secret pajamas. Okay, the next brand at number six is Disney, believe it or not. Disney sells well on Poshmark. Not all Disney, of course, um, but the ones that I always look to pick up is vintage, absolutely vintage Disney, if it's in good condition, can do really well really well um, and then something like this that has a lot of novelty to it and it's very seasonal so this was from the Disney store it was all glittery and it had this embroidered Mickey and Minnie this sold really well here's an example of a vintage Disney item that I would pick up without a second thought this is an adult sweater and it, it sold the same day for $30 I was really really happy to have found that and I'm always keeping my eyes peeled for stuff like that and then another element of Disney that I'm going to mention is um, costumes kids costumes they absolutely sell Something like this, you also have keywords you can play with, like modest. This particular piece had a high neckline, or I've sold them before, where they have like the arm covers built in. And again, the word modest, some parents are really looking for that, and that is something that you can include in your listing as well. But I would definitely suggest staying away from just like the very, very generic Disney costumes, like the type of thing that you can buy in Walmart, and look more for like Disney Store or Disney Parks, or something that's maybe a more obscure character. Okay, number five, the best-selling brands or most frequently sold in 2020 is Lucky Brand. Um, so once again, I have sort of refined what I pick up in terms of Lucky Brand, and I really focus more on like boots and shoes at this point, um, especially the leather ones. These ones were pre-owned, but they did come in the original box, um, sold for 40 within a week. And then another example would be these Espadrille wedges I picked up at a yard sale. They were actually brand new with the tag still on, paid a dollar, and they sold for 40 same week as well so they can do quite well but again make sure they are modern sizes and they're in good condition I feel like that really matters with Lucky Brand I do sell some of the jeans but I prefer to try to stick to them being again either like high-rise skinnies or heavily distressed or something like stand out like that or new with tags and when it comes to Lucky Brand uh, like t-shirts and things like that again I try to be very picky I don't find that a lot of them sell very easily unless they have the type of graphics that have a lot of specific keywords that can come with them so for instance this one had the peace sign and it had like words on it like hope love unity and um, very kind of like boho rock and roll 70s hippie type vibe lots of keywords to play with there to attract the right buyer all right number four is a tie between anthropology um so and talbots so uh two very very different brands um but both came in at number four on this top 10 list so the first i'm going to show you is just an example this is moth um as I'm sure many people are aware at this point, Anthropology has a whole plethora of brands underneath its umbrella. You can go on Pinterest, you just go on the internet, anywhere really. You can watch almost any YouTube reseller who sells on Poshmark and they will let you know about Anthropology brands, which ones are worth picking up and which ones are really should be left behind at this point because they don't sell so well. I find Anthropology to be incredibly hit or miss. I by no means pick up every piece at this point, but when the price is right and it's a nice sort of classic piece, I usually grab it or if it's a very specific novelty print because those pieces can occasionally be rare and um, so like I said a moth cardigan I paid just a dollar or two for this it sold for 24 I grabbed this piece from, from a thrift store because I felt like it had a lot of fun keywords as well that kind of like wiggle dress very like Viva Las Vegas pinup style retro and um, I played with some of those keywords especially on eBay it eventually sold for 18 this wasn't the best buy in the world but I probably would pick it up again because I only paid a couple of dollars for it and it's sold within just about three or four weeks of being listed. And then the last example is Knitted and Knotted. This piece took about two years to sell. It finally sold for the full asking price of 25, but I do not know that I would pick it up again, but I thought it was a cute piece, so I'm surprised it sat as long as it did. Okay, on to the other half of number four, which is, as I mentioned, Talbot's. Talbot's to me is a brand that is very 
bundle friendly. I find that I sell a lot of my Talbots bundled in with other items. So because of that, I am willing to pick it up, but again, getting quite specific with what I look for here. We have a pair of quilted leather boots here. They're kind of a no brainer. They probably would have cost $130 at least um, new and not that that matters necessarily because there's plenty of brands out there that retail high that resell for not very much at all and um, this is a great quality pair of boots. Talbots does make quality um, quality clothing and quality shoes and things like that so these were worth picking up and they sold for 30 as you can see so I will keep my eyes open for Talbot's shoes if they're a nice modern style. And then we also have something like this that again is extremely novelty. It is very season based, but people like this kind of stuff. Seasons tweetings and it has two birds and all that good stuff there. So that is an example of the kind of Talbots that I would still go ahead and pick up. And of course, Talbots plus size can do really well as well. And um, so just bear that in mind. All right, we are on to number three and I can hardly believe it, but it is Loft and Taylor Loft. I don't like this brand. I'm going to be really honest with you. And I'm working at getting as much out of my closet as I possibly can and not buying it again. Again. It just doesn't sell well for me in general, or so I think. Um, again, it is number three on my most sold list, but I don't think of it as something that moves quickly for me, and I don't think of it as something that I really enjoy listing. I don't like listing the pants. The blouses to me are a bit boring. What can I say? However, I will say that the suits, like the two-piece suits, blazer and pants, can do really, really well. Some of the career dresses can do well, and some of the novelty pieces, again, like this that I show you here with the little sleeping fox can also do well and move quite quickly because for obvious reasons people like it. I will also mention that Loft has a plus line it's literally called Loft Plus and that can also do quite well so this sweater here was a size 20 to 22 um, and it was a really nice sweater but it moved very very quickly much faster than any of my other Loft like similar type items did so I have a feeling there's a market there for that plus size Loft clothing. All right, we are almost there, you guys. So we are now on number two in the list. Um, and that is Torrid. Torrid can move well and it can move quickly in my experience. I do try to go for the plus sizes. You can get Torrid in like a size zero. Now their sizing is vanity sizing. So that really equates to more like I think a medium large. You can find the size chart on the website so you can compare that and know how to list items correctly. Um, but I prefer two, which is, well, really one. One and up, which like one is like a one X, but really when you get into like two, three, four, I tend to find um, pieces moving faster. Now, Torrid can do some really fun collaborations um, with things like Disney and um, all kinds of other stuff, basically. I think of Disney because that's the stuff that I have found personally. And that can do really, really well because those pieces are produced for a short amount of time and then they're off the shelf. So people are looking to either replace items or find items that they didn't get at retail. So keep your eyes open for those collaborations. They can be quite subtle as well. So don't forget to check your tags, but usually they will say like Disney Torrid in the tags. You can see that it is a collaboration. Again, we're looking at a novelty print here with this Torrid piece. It's just a like super cute floral cactus t-shirt. It's a size 3X. It's got everything going for it. This sold super quickly for 28. And something like this, of course, is a no brainer. This was brand new with tags. Again, we have a size 2X here. So it's a great size there in terms of moving quickly. And it has a wonderful velvet floral skull design on this sweatshirt. All of those elements together, I think I paid like two or three dollars for this. It's just total no-brainer. Would pick it up every single time. And so here we are at the number one best-selling brand of 2020 for me on Poshmark. And don't get mad at me because it's not technically a brand, but you have to list it as a brand on Poshmark. <laughs> So bear with me, it's vintage. Now I know that that is not one specific thing, like one specific brand that you can go out and Google and all that kind of stuff. But what I'm trying to relay here is number one, list your items as vintage under brand because that helps people find them. <laughs> and uh, rather than just like the obscure, not known actual vintage brands, I would suggest going vintage every time in that particular brand line uh, when you are listing. Um, but also I would say, keep your eyes open for vintage. This is the second year in a row that vintage has been the best-selling brand, the best-selling sort of category, whatever you want to call it, on Poshmark for me. And I've expanded it this year by selling more than just vintage clothing. And that too has done very, very well. I've sold housewares, I've sold sweaters, accessories, decorations, all kinds of different items that have all fallen under that vintage umbrella as the brand. And I could not suggest it 
more highly. If you are interested or you find joy in selling vintage items, Poshmark is definitely a platform that you could explore that on. So let me show you just a few examples and then we'll wrap this up. As you can see here, um, a vintage Winnie the Pooh fabric uh, sheet set. It is a crib or toddler bed sheet set and it sold for 25 and it sold quickly as well. All right, next, a pair of children's overalls. Um, again, no specific brand. I am not bothered about the brand when it comes to my vintage items. Yes, it's always nice to find vintage, you know, guest jeans or, I don't know, vintage Gucci, whatever. It's nice to find those vintage big name brands. Of course it is, but it doesn't have to be that. So much is about the style and the novelty of the piece. Um, so something like this sold for $18. Another example, we have just like a vintage collegiate hat. This is something that I previously would have assumed assumed that would sell on eBay or most likely on Etsy, but Etsy is no longer my only avenue for selling vintage. Poshmark is as much a part of that as Etsy ever was now. I've also done really well this year selling novelty sweaters. So here's an example of a Christmas sweater. We all know these kind of like ugly Christmas sweaters. That's literally the keyword. I think they're fabulous, <laughs> but people search for ugly Christmas sweaters. That is what I put in here and um, that they can do really well. An example here, this one was broken in a place and it still sold for $40 here. Or another example would be um, something like this, which is a vintage Halloween sweater. I absolutely suggest keeping your eyes peeled for these kind of things. People love them and they sell really well around that kind of fall time of year or like late summer. Another example in terms of accessories, a vintage Scooby-Doo watch that was untested sold for $30 here on Poshmark. Again, previously would have thought eBay or Etsy was the place. No more. I absolutely cross post all my vintage items over to Poshmark now. And the final item I had to show you was something like this vintage Nike uh, tracksuit. This is not something I thought that would sell here. I didn't think it had the marketplace in terms of the style. Um, I was completely wrong. It sold within a week and it sold for $70. So I am still learning and I'm still telling myself as, as much as I share with you guys, every single vintage item, if it's clothing, accessories, or something like for the home should be cross posted to Poshmark. If you have the time and it is part of your process already, go ahead and pop it over there. It doesn't cost anything to list on Poshmark. You only pay 20% if you actually sell the item. So as far as I'm concerned, it's almost always worth cross posting. All right, you guys, and that is it. Again, let me know down below your best selling brands or things that you will always pick up when you're outsourcing for reselling online. If you you here and you like thrifty content then don't forget to hit that like button down below and the subscribe button so you can come back and hang out some more as usual there'll be links down below in the description box to our facebook group which is called thrift nice uh, that is a great place if you are a new reseller or a seasoned reseller to come and meet some other people in the community ask your questions and share your experiences and if you're on the hunt for fun reseller themed merch then don't forget to check out my teespring store link down below as well we have t-shirts face masks <laughs> fanny packs all kinds of cool stuff that can accompany you on your next thrifting trip all right you guys thank you so much for tuning in and i'll catch you in the next one bye